Now I'm overjoyed to introduce our first speaker of the evening, the founder of the Black Church Food Security Network, the recipient of numerous awards, one recent, including the coveted Emerging Leaders Award. Reverend Dr. Heber Brown was also inducted into the Martin Luther King Jr. Board of Preachers at Morehouse College. We wanna give him a very warm welcome and thank you. And I believe Dr. Yes, I am here. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, there you are. Okay. Well, good evening, everybody. It's so great to be with you. And thank you so much for this invitation to share in this gathering on this sacred day as we honor one who I embrace as a saint of God and a prophet and a soldier for justice alongside so many others. I think Dr. King would probably be one of the first to tell you that he was not a singular figure in the civil rights movement, but just one voice in a great chorus of those who were working together to address a myriad of challenges and issues of his time. And might our reflection today inspire us to step forward all the more on the challenges of our time. For the few minutes that are mine, and I do have my clock on me because I can get very excited about such topics. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about our work with the Black Church Food Security Network and some of the whys behind our work as an organization. But first, allow me to begin by inviting you to see food insecurity and health disparities in the African-American community as an extension of the legacies of plantation economics and the desired and intentional outcome of policies of racial discrimination and redlining. Now, because this is a different frame with food insecurity, I'm gonna repeat what I just said. I wanna invite you to see food insecurity and health disparities in the African-American community as an extension of the legacies of plantation economics and the desired and intentional outcome of policies of racial discrimination and redlining. Seeing food insecurity through these kinds of lenses exposes the shortcomings and deficiencies of food charity approaches and gets us closer to seeing the necessity of food justice as an imperative and not optional, not extracurricular. But if we see food insecurity as the fruit of injustice, then it should call us all the more to step forward into, into organizing for food justice, racial justice, economic justice, and the like. I think that's what, um, a piece of what this great ancestor, Fannie Lou Hamer, spoke about. In the next few minutes, I just want to talk about hungry for food justice, a path beyond charity. Listen to what Fannie Lou Hamer said. And for some of you, this is a name that's familiar, but just in case it's not, Allow me to say that if you've ever heard this phrase, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, that phrase comes from Mrs. Fannie Lou Hamer. She was a organizer and activist for voting rights and social justice and human rights in the mid 20th century, right alongside Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And through her perspective as a sharecropper, she also had insight with respect to food and food insecurity. Check out this quote I'd like to offer up on this MLK Day weekend. Food is used as a political weapon, but if you have a pig in your backyard and some vegetables in your garden, you can feed yourself and your family and nobody can push you around. With that kind of framing around food, it's clear that Mrs. Hamer was not seeing food insecurity as incidental. She was not seeing it as an accident, as an unfortunate and unintentional gap in social policy. But rather, Fannie Lou Hamer was seeing food insecurity, hunger and malnutrition as the intentional fruit of unjust systems, systems of greed and systems of domination and exploitation. 
But she also sees, in addition to naming food as a political weapon in the context of racial and social justice, she also offers up a pathway forward to overcoming the evil and the spiritual wickedness in high places with respect to the food environment as designed by uh, political and corporate forces. She said, if you have a pig in your backyard and some vegetables in your garden, you can feed yourself and your family. And then don't miss this. And nobody can push you around. Mrs. Hamer, alongside so many others in the mid 20th century during the civil rights movement and the black power era, were not just concerned about eating one meal for the day or meat or trying to do something to meet the need for daily bread, but she also was organizing to address the dynamics that had people hungry in the first place. And then as a part of her legacy, and it's a part of the spirit of what I embrace and understand and interpret Dr. King and so many others who have been working on that helped to bring about the Black Church Food Security Network that I was blessed to found in 2015 and lead to this day. Let me tell you a quick story. In the bottom right corner of your screen is a church called Pleasant Hope Baptist Church. I pastored this church for 14 years, one of the highest honors of my life. And while pastoring, I got an up-close view of the unmerry-go-round of parishioners in my congregation going in and out of the hospital for diet-related issues. I wanted to do something to address the challenges that I saw in my church, something that go went beyond prayer and scripture. And so I went to the market across the intersection from our church called Belvedere Square. Some of you know it. It's in the top left corner in the picture there. And I went there to try to establish a partnership with them to pipeline nutrient-rich produce to my congregation. For a myriad of reasons, it did not work out. And so I went back to my congregation, and instead of finding partnership outside of ourselves, we started to examine what we already had. And one of the things that our church had was this plot of land right next to our church building. And this little piece of land was very instrumental in helping to foster a vision to start growing our own food. I started talking to my congregation about it. And as we talked about it, we got more excited about transforming this space into a garden. We worked together. And as a result of our collaboration and partnership, we transformed this into this. This 1500 square foot garden produces uh, 1,200 pounds of produce plus per year now of all kinds of vegetables. And we work together following the leadership, and I just got to speak this name, of Maxine Nicholas. She was one of the elders in the congregation at the time. She's since passed on. But she came up to Baltimore from North Carolina with a whole lot of farming experience. And she, along with the others who I call the AARP club, my retirees in the congregation, they were the ones that really took the garden to the next level and helped us to see some of the highest potential of it. But they also helped me to see what could happen if religious institutions, if faith-based organizations, and more specifically, if black churches embraced an asset-based community development lens, looked at what we already had in our hands, to address the challenges around food insecurity in our community. The idea came from our experience growing at Pleasant Hope to create the Black Church Food Security Network. We co-create Black food ecosystems anchored by Black churches and in partnership with Black farmers and accomplices. We look at all the stuff that churches have, land and kitchens and classrooms and vans that sit largely underutilized Monday through Saturday. We look at the millions of African-Americans that are part of many of the Christian denominations in the country. And we say, what if we could organize a fraction of what we already have to address the sin and injustice of food insecurity and food apartheid? So through our organization, we have a number of programs. One is called Operation Higher Ground, where we work with African-American churches to establish gardens on their land. I love this picture because it's a church in Philadelphia with the members of the garden ministry supporting this African-American church. 
And this was March of 2022. And they sent me an update picture in September. And in just a few months, they were able to transform that land into this beautiful garden. All over the city of Baltimore in the food apartheid zones, we are establishing gardens at black churches to grow vegetables and to connect these congregations with black farmers. We also hold soil to sanctuary markets, farmers markets inside churches on Sunday after worship. And we invite the members of the churches, including the young people to do food demonstrations and cooking demonstrations and the like. I love the markets because they also bring together people of various faith and other uh, background, diverse backgrounds all together around the importance and significance of food justice. We also take people to tour black farms and to meet black farmers so that we might directly be in relationship and not just in transactional connection, but transformational partnership. Through our art program, we help churches, excuse me, to buy in bulk from black farmers. We want them to buy for all of the meals that black churches have all year long. We want black farmers on the church budget. I'm gonna say it again. Black farmers on the budget as a matter of justice, as a matter of economic justice, and as a matter of righting the wrong and addressing the sin that we see with respect to food insecurity and hunger in this country. These are some of our farmers and some of the del deliveries that we've made as well. We invite you to volunteer or support us in any number of ways. You can use these QR codes to connect with us and we'd love to receive not only your support, but also to see you as partners in this movement for food justice. For if we are to address issues around climate change and issues with respect to uh, the environment, then justice with respect to food, racial justice has to also be a part of the equation. I'm excited to be fueled uh, by the legacy of Dr. King and so many others in the civil rights movement and the black power era that we might see food insecurity. It's my takeaway. See food insecurity as sin. See it as the intentional act and legacy of uh, plantation economics. See food charity as deficient. While it does have some usefulness in emergencies, it is not a long-term goal. We have to organize for justice. And I'm excited to be partnering with each of you and so many more to help bring this about. God bless. Thank you so much.